My name is Betty Smithson and I've been involved with the NHS since before it started. I was born in 1930. I came to Leeds at the age of 18. I came into nursing at the Leeds General Infirmary. Um, the difference between nurses then and now is that nurses in those days learnt on the job. We were fortunate enough to have excellent ward sisters and staff nurses who taught us all we knew. The sisters then were very, very strict. You weren't allowed to question anything. You just had to do what you were told. There were no specialties in those days. Every, everything was on the ward, so that there was medic, um, surgical children, burns, accidents, operations, everything. Our uniform dresses had to be eight inches off the floor, so that they weren't too short. When you were climbing on the beds looking after patients, we had to wear black blouse stockings, black lace-up shoes, hair off the collar, no jewellery whatsoever. We used to roll our hair, if it was long, round a stocking top, and it used to roll up. And I can recall one time a piece of hair fell down, and for a fortnight I had to go to nature every morning to see that my hair was properly uh, used. And that's eventually when I had my hair cut off completely, so that it never touched my collar again. Um, you were taught how to do things properly, and it's funny, I still make my bed with hospital corners, and it looks beautiful when it's done. And I spent eight years at the um, General Infirmary, and then I left. You weren't allowed to get married during your training, or if you worked at the infirmary, you weren't allowed to be married. If you were married, you got to do part-time. I got married when I was 23 and went part-time doing 40 hours a week, that was part-time. The first hospital I was at, <clears throat> we did three months solidly on night duty and then we had a week's holiday. We never had a day off during that three months. There was no, um, when I first started nursing, there was no central sterilising unit. We got to do all the uh, sterilising of all the instruments. We had big sterilisers on the boards. One was for sterilising bedpans and the other was for sterilising instruments. We used to have to, uh, at night duty, we had to um, wash all the rubber gloves that the surgeons used. And we used to blow in them to make sure there were no holes, powder them and put them up for um, reuse. Nowadays nothing is reused, everything is thrown away. I've loved it all and I think this is why um, I want to sort of stay associated with hospitals um, even at my age. Uh, and I do feel that sometimes um, I can pass on my experience and the knowledge I've gained. Um, onto people who are younger than me. I love the NHS. Um, I love this trust. I've had lots of operations, but I've always been treated wonderfully. Uh, and I, I can't fault them. I think we're very fortunate in Leeds to have such a good service. A lot of problems, obviously, but I think the nursing care and the, med the surgical and medical care is second to none.
she didn't do anything about it. And when the baby was born, it was still born. And my mum must have been in hospital quite a long time with her own condition. So I don't know how they did for money, but certainly she said they had to borrow money from my uncle to pay for the baby's funeral. So you realise it all cost money in those days. There's a bit more demand on it now. And from a sort of a therapist's point of view, it was because there were an increasing number of older people surviving who needed a lot more medical care. And of course, I also worked with people with dementia we could see that was becoming an increasing problem. Many more people are living alone now than when I was younger. It was a very much a standard practice that an older person would move in with, you know, one of the children. Um, we didn't know many older people living alone when we were small. So that's it. It certainly got much smarter when I think of some of the old, the old institutions that have been converted into hospitals that we manage pretty well, but there are so many modern facilities now. There are so many developments in every field of medicine. And I think I've had excellent service when I've had my own children, when I've had any operations, checkups, everything. So I am just very grateful for the health service. Now, this was 60 years ago, so it might sound quite crude, but it was a pretty good way of doing things. It did mean that, unlike my father, uh, I was able to keep some sight. We had an um, NHS ophthalmic optician, and up till then, I had been using things like this, which my father used to bring home from the Rolls Royce, which were inspection lenses to read with. So we were reading like this. This, this ophthalmic optician came up with two innovative ideas. The first one was actually a pair of reading glasses. We had tried things before from the NHS that were a bit like having video cameras on, a, on spectacle frames. It never really worked very well, but these, which look a bit odd, but they worked really well. It meant that I could read at about this distance. It meant that I could read and write. I've got hands-free technology. I didn't have to hold a lens like this. And it just made life so much easier for me um, at school, at university, and later on in my career. The other thing that he came up with was what we call a monocular, which is like a little telescope. And I can tell the cameraman that you might just have a wee look coming at the end of your nose there, but maybe not, using that. Um, and around 1996 or so thereabouts, I developed a detached retina in one of my eyes. And again, the NHS came to the rescue. 
and sorted out the detached retina, and which meant I could carry on working just as I had done before. Really good. So the NHS has made a massive difference to my life. It's meant to let me operate as a sighted, albeit not very well sighted individual, but uh, as a sighted person, I've had a good education, I've had a pretty good career, I've had pretty good retirement so far. And it does mean a lot to me, does the NHS. If you look at the end of the 1990s, um, the free at point of delivery started to disappear. So, for example, to get um, these glasses and maybe a, a pair of normal seeing glasses, which I needed up until the lens implant, it was looking about to oh, seventeen hundred pounds thereabouts, and I got um, I think it was four pounds towards the cost of that. The NHS was unique to start with, and still pretty well is. The whole concept of it paying off, because investing in people's health pays off for everybody. If they haven't invested in me, I may have spent my life on the door. So I believe that the NHS is something that we should fight for by tooth and by claw if we need to. It is a wonderful thing. It's probably one of the things that Britain can be most proud of. And uh, I'm totally behind it. chair of the patient participation group at North East Medical Practice. We uh, are looking back in time over the NHS, there is much more association with the patients and this is much better in many respects. I feel much more comfortable speaking to my GP now than I did many years ago. It's a totally different environment in the, uh, in the NHS now. The doctors are much more approachable and they understand the, the difficulties more that patients have. And we appreciate the fact that they are busy people and they have a lot to do. But we feel now that patients' views are taken into consideration and that there's great improvements and still more to follow. Oh, fantastically changed since I was young. Um, you were in fear, perhaps, of going to the doctors, I think. It was very difficult to be able to speak your mind and say what you felt. Hello, my 
My name's Paul. Uh, I've been in service shows of uh, over 20 years now. When I was 19, I started to hear voices uh, telling me to harm myself and others. I've been through entire mental health system and I've overcome many barriers. And the system, over the years, has become a lot fairer. Because up early days, if you had a problem, a mental health problem, you get locked up straight away. But nowadays, it's more therapeutic and um, the environment's changed. People are getting treated in community now instead of going into an hospital and just shoveled it out there. So basically, um, the stigma's still there. There's, there's quite a bit of way to go, but hopefully we can overcome this and then make it better for others and improve in everybody's lives. Nadia Anderson. I am a GP partner at North Leeds Medical Practice um, and I am 40 years old. I went into medicine to try and help people and make a difference to people's lives because I know how important health is. I strongly believe if you do not have health, you do not have anything. When it works, it works extremely well and the NHS has done what it wants to do, which is cradle to death. The biggest strength of the NHS in that 70 years is the people who work for it and fight for it and continue to do their best every single day. because no matter what is your background, what you can afford, whatever is your status in life, health is the great leveller and I strongly believe that if you're born privileged or not privileged you should have the same access um, and that's what the NHS does, it, it creates that access to health for everyone so that everyone can be in the best health to be able to achieve. But also as a principle this idea that we have a shared responsibility and that by investing in health 
we actually save costs and we make lives better for other people. so that they can do more for us and more for themselves because they are under pressure all the time, the staff in every area of the, uh, of the hospitals. recognise and treat it with respect. I love the NHS. I love the NHS. I love the NHS. And the NHS loves me as well. I love the NHS. <laughs> Happy birthday, NHS. Thank you. Whee! 